Hello and welcome to another episode of the Z Fashionista Show, where I'm back bringing you that excellence, that opulence, that decadence. So if you want to know about that famous line, by the way, it's from the throne, Kanye West and Jay Z's song, Black, Black Excellence, Opulence, Decadence. That's where the line comes from. But anyway, today I'm back bringing you another episode of the Z Fashionista, obviously, but specifically the Z Does Cambridge section of things. So I've been here at Cambridge for quite some time now this is the second term the Lent term and I'm sure as you know Cambridge terms are hella short so this Lent term the second term is about to end very soon so I think I'm now in a position to give you some tips you know about Cambridge or specifically 10 things they don't tell you about Cambridge so when you apply when you look online you might not find some of these 10 things but these are just 10 things from my experience here at Cambridge and I just want to impart that knowledge share that with you if you're thinking about applying either as an undergraduate uh, or a postgraduate if you want to do your MPhil here for a year or if you want to do your PhD here for three years you know you'll be spending quite a long time here so these are 10 things that you probably should know especially as an international postgraduate student yeah you should know about Cambridge time or well, they don't tell you about Cambridge time so what does that mean so the first thing is that terms there's this weird thing where terms start on like a Thursday so you know like in the world or in the working world usually it'll be like Monday to Friday you know like the work week or whatever or terms even in other countries or whatever start from Monday to Friday or work week start from Monday to Friday but here at Cambridge things start on Thursday so every time like I'm trying to book a flight or whatever I always come on the Thursday time but you'll see as a postgraduate things actually start on the Monday not really the Thursday but anyway just remember that terms start on a Thursday and the week starts on a Thursday so that's really weird but yeah this place basically runs on Facebook. Everything is like on Facebook from your, if you're a postgraduate student, there's the MCR committee or whatever it's called. I think it's called the middle common room, something of that sort. Anyway, the MCR is basically like the postgraduate body and you'll see that for your college, most of those things run on Facebook. So on Facebook, they'll let you know like stuff about rent, stuff about what's happening in the college, uh, competitions that you should enter for, like opportunities to present your work as a postgraduate student, all of those. So the first thing that you should probably do when you're thinking about coming to Cambridge, when you get your offer for Cambridge, all of that, when you just want to, when you know especially which college you're going to be in in Cambridge, is to join the Facebook MCR or JCR as a junior common room. I think that's for like undergraduates. So yeah, it runs on Facebook. So if you really want to know what's going on, uh, where the punting passes are, when there's going to be, I don't know, some presentation, when people are going to be screening the UEFA Champions League game in the common room, you should probably join the your college's MCR Facebook group. And it's not just like your MCR is in your college. It's also in some cases your department has Facebook groups. Um, even like if you are part of a society, let's say you're part of the Fly Society, Fly Girls of Cambridge, that runs on Facebook. Or you're part of the African Society, that runs on Facebook. Or you're part of the ACS, which is African and Caribbean Society, that runs on Facebook. So all of these societies, all of these groups basically run on Facebook. The nightlife in Cambridge is, if I could describe it in one word, interesting interesting there's like there's three clubs basically there's a club called fez fez club and then there's a club called Bellare, and apparently there's a club called lola lows lola lows so i've not been to the last one i've been to fez and i've been to Bellare, i believe um and so obviously you know the only nights to really go to if you're like me you know you like music popping music not like the Lion King theme song or other weird stuff is to go specifically on like I think it's reggae or hip-hop nights or whatever at either Bellare or Fez it's either on a Friday or on a, a Sunday but anyway the nightlife options are hella limited so on top of the thing where I said most bars and I think maybe the pubs so there's a difference between a pub and a bar or whatever I'm guessing the pubs may close a bit later if you like that whole shabby chic bar vibe go to the pub but, I mean, if you're looking to go out to an actual club, um, 
there's only like three of those and your options may be limited if your music choices are very specific so you should know that the light nightlife is not you know it's not popping things aren't you know going down in the dms the club isn't going up on a tuesday no cash rules everything around me cream billion or the pound 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 billion yeah times 17 if you're south african or 16 point something thank you sorrow thank you new president south africa yeah so cash rules everything around cambridge i mean this place is so expensive like i did so they don't tell you about the money involved so let's start with the food now the food at your mundane um supermarkets are they mundane whatever the food whether you're at marks and spencer whether you're at Sainsbury's, that food is expensive. That's expensive. So expensive, like per week, you could be paying like, I don't know, a whole lot for food. And not just at like the supermarkets, even like Nando's. Imagine paying like 11 pounds, imagine paying like 11 pounds or, or more or whatever. Like a whole lot of money. Like that's over like 300 rand or something for Nando's. That's so crazy. So whether you're at Nando's, whether it's the fruits, whether it's like whatever meats or whatever, just in general, compared to South Africa, and I believe compared to America as well, not the whole of America. So you know, like different cities tend to be more expensive than other cities, but Cambridge is hella expensive. And also I saw on the property market, property situation that Cambridge is like the second or third most expensive city in the United Kingdom after I think Oxford. So not third, second most expensive city. So it's not just the property, it's also the food. So they don't tell you, they don't tell you how expensive the food is around here. Also traveling is expensive. Traveling is hella expensive. Like for me to do my nails, for me to do my hair, I need to travel 85 kilometers to do my hair and my nails. Is that... And the expense, that expense of traveling, being on the train, I mean, train adds up, uh, whether you're taking a bus, I mean, all of those things add up to cost a whole lot of money. So, I mean, if you think about me, like where I live, if I'm trying to go out on a night, I need to pay 10 pounds to get there, 10 pounds to get back, 10 pounds for one drink. I'm not just gonna drink one drink, I'm gonna drink more. It's the entrance, all of that, all of that stuff combines for a huge amount of money. So yeah, cash rules everything around here check we need a moment of silence for the food let me drink out of the bottle it's a little pina colada cocktail you know i had my first pina colada like two weeks ago and that was a life-changing experience it was at a, at a mexican bar here at cambridge and that pina colada went in anyway the food let's concentrate let's be serious now the food is in general shocking horrific unheard of disgusting Ugh, unthinkable all of those horrific words the food and i watched come dine with me i knew that you know in the united kingdom things aren't popping unless you you know looking for that african that caribbean that asian type of food but the actual english food i mean if you go to a supermarket like and you eat something typically british like fish pie what is it beef wellington what else what else y'all got whatever like the food from the supermarkets even to the restaurants honestly the restaurants formals i mean just even the options in terms of like different cuisine you have to go to like mill road or something if you want to have something on the bit more you know seasoned side of things if so bring them your seasoning you might have to bring your own seasoning when you come here by the way if you want to add some impart some flavor some whatever into the food you might have to bring your own seasoning because the seasoning here is lacking lacking so yeah the food on the whole and i already talked about expense obviously the food is expensive but it's mediocre as well so it's like what are you paying for are you paying for the fact that cambridge is one of the oldest universities in the united kingdom what what, what are you paying for like i'm telling you i mean i'm from south africa as you may have gleaned and there we have sun you know i mean we have winter you know it gets to well, 16 or well, 14 or well, 11 degrees in extreme weather but the weather here is a nightmarish unheard of disgusting ridiculous horrific 
all of those words and the thing is it's not even just the fact that it's cold it's the fact that there's no sun so you know how studies have shown or studies have said that there's a link between lack of vitamin d and like depression and stuff so i really think that you know the lack of sun really plays on your mind and stuff so i'd say definitely as an international postgraduate student bring your vitamin d pills because you're gonna need those because this, this place might you know play with your mind like you need to prepare for that you like you need to bring jackets upon jackets upon jackets upon jackets bring your vitamin d pills like just the weather is something that's just shocking and i just saw this week it's getting colder is it supposed to be getting hotter like what's what's happening in europe like is it not supposed to be getting hotter instead it's getting colder because these men <laughs> these men are trying to get money out of you child child money 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 everything so if you don't read the fine print for example me um no no, no i read the fine print i read the entire tenancy agreement i'm just you know highlighting to you to read the thing but anyway, um, like they want you as a postgraduate student, for example, to sign like a 48 week tenancy, 48 weeks, how many weeks are they in a year 56? So like sign a 48 week tenancy where you're, they're basically forcing you to to pay for 48 weeks, even though, especially as an international student, are you fixing to be in the United Kingdom for 48 weeks? I certainly am not. I'm not trying to spend the summer in the United Kingdom, for example. And so they might want to force you to sign that. And to get out of that, you have to involve like a graduate tutor who has to be the liaison between you and the college or whatever. It's a whole long protracted situation involving letters from here, there and everywhere. So anyway, read your tenancy agreement, make sure that you know what you pay for because it's also like a kitchen charge where even if you don't live in your college accommodation, right? Let's say you live in a flat somewhere, you still have to pay some money to the college. There's a thing of if you're living in that outside accommodation, they might make you want to, you know, they might make you sign a tenancy agreement for a year. Now you have to be there for the whole year. There's all kinds of, you know, weird stuff in there. Like for some colleges like mine, you can't bring furniture into the college. So if you're trying to have a freezer, so think about it, like there's eight of us in this row, but there's only like two fridges and one freezer. So if you're trying to, you know, bring your own mini fridge or mini freezer in here, you can't do that since no furniture is allowed. All of those weird and wonderful, horrific, tiny little details that are in the fine print. It's just like how people are trying to one up each other, trying to show how smart they are and stuff. You know, and that stuff is, especially if you are a person who's not, I mean, I think it's also maybe subject specific. So in philosophy, I mean, that is the stuff of philosophy. Philosophy equals cis white male generally, considering that the people that do philosophy, and this is all over the world. In South Africa, it's the same thing. I've been to South African conferences in philosophy where I was the only black person in South Africa. Check that. So obviously in Cambridge, I mean, there is as many women of color in our department as there are i think people with the same name two people with the same name something of that sort so obviously representation in terms of melanin and that is not on par and that's quite interesting because cambridge i mean if you look on the website they talk about freedom of thought freedom of expression representation cultural diversity when that's really not the case and that's quite evident when you go to these discussion groups just i'm just like i'm saying the level of discussion the one upmanship the aggression all that type of thing is really off-putting and quite shocking so that's why for me like i only go to certain reading groups like ain't nobody got time for that don't nobody got time for that so i go to other reading groups that i find much more interesting because when you want to learn like learning or being a philosopher is not just about one upmanship it's about thought it's about thinking critically you know weighing up options all of that stuff and that doesn't mean the delivery always has to be that you know sharp like attacking each other and that kind of thing so yeah what they don't tell you about is that that that's what you should expect at these reading groups that type of discussion and stuff and that that's quite off-putting i think um, depending on who you are but one thing that you should know you should remember even if you're not that type of person to busy want to you know you know if you want to make your point but you see that everybody else who makes their point is trying to one up the other you can still make your point that's what you need to know that how you make your point your thought process all of those things are worthwhile and worthy so even if you see other people speaking you know in whichever manner fashion and that looks like that's the intelligent way to speak you too are intelligent for being here you are intelligent and enough on your own and you are killing it you are the bomb you are the shit you are the urine all of that you don't have to go to everything 
So even as a postgraduate student, there might be the pressure, like I said, to go to this reading group, go to that reading group, go to this seminar, that seminar, be in this society, that society, do this, that, and the other. I mean, it's good to go out there and meet people, or whatever, but you don't need to go everywhere, especially things that don't serve you. There's learning, but there's also things that are harmful to your learning. So for me, um, like I said, for example, I don't go to all reading groups because I just don't, like if something is, it's possible to not to go somewhere and you're actually not learning anything. You actually just expended time and energy reading a paper. That's not going to get you anywhere. Um, I think it's important to go somewhere. If you don't know a thing, you're interested in learning about it, go there. But also go into something that's interesting for you, something that's worthwhile, something that's going to feed your research. Not where you're just sitting there watching people argue, discussing some completely random paper or whatever. So basically what I do is I select which, which reading groups and which things I go to. Something that I've been really interested in this term is a reading group that we have in uh, the philosophy of science department. By the way, my PhD is in philosophy of science. But anyway, this is a reading group on the intersection of race, gender and discipline that has been so interesting and such a worthwhile thing to go to I mean I guess it just ha it does have some elements um, to do with my own research but just like the topics that I've learned like I've learned about Miranda Fricker and her book she has a 2007 book called Epistemic Injustice what she speaks about there you know I've learned about implicit bias so epistemic injustice she speaks about two types of uh, epistemic injustice epistemic by the way comes from the same kind of family of things epistemology is um, the study of knowledge so epistemic injustice has to do with injustice with regards to knowing or as your, your status as a knower and she speaks about two types of epistemic injustice testimonial injustice and hermeneutical injustice testimonial injustice is where basically your status as a knower is devalued uh, with regards to or because of your identity so if you're a black woman ding 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 your status as a knower might just be devalued because of people's um, stereotypes or whatever preconceived notions or implicit bias with regards to black people or black women specifically and then hermeneutical injustice hermeneutical um, is a word generally used in philosophy and hermeneutical has to do with interpretation so hermeneutical injustice has to do with when your experience you don't have the the tools the epistemic tools to make sense of your experience so as a woman back in the day for example they didn't have the epistemic tools to call out or they didn't have the word or the understanding of what sexual harassment is or what postpartum depression is so women didn't have those epistemic tools to make sense of their um experience so anyway i've learned about that or the type of people that come here to cambridge generally in the majority and imposter syndrome so just like depending on who you are especially if you're a woman of color like i've just being in the fly group fly girls group um fly girls of cambridge group which is generally women of color and non-binary people or you know whatever fly girls of cambridge really amazing group and just like the experiences that i've read and seen there you know people have expressed um the racial discrimination or sexual discrimination that they experienced. There were stories like recently about how women of color were being spat at by obviously white males in some random van spitting at them, like who does that? Um, experience of racism that experienced in college, in their college, um, just like some ridiculous thing where a college wanted to have a BME officer, which is a black minority ethnic officer, and some person like wrote about how we should have a white minority ethnic uh, officer, just like that. that willful ignorance tone deaf with regards to the issues in the world is indicative of generally the type of people who come here people who are from a certain uh, epistemic terrain but also a certain social terrain people i'm sure have been sheltered who haven't been exposed to all different types of people uh, but also i like that willful ignorance willful ignorance because it's willful ignorance these people consider themselves to be smart but they're willfully by choice ignorant on issues of social justice which is why you make those ridiculous statements like that it's also privilege preserving epistemic pushback you're trying to preserve your, your epistemic status your epistemic terrain by you know by if someone uh, tries to call out social injustice and you push back on that that's what you're doing um, so just notice that those are the types of people that come here, people for, of like extreme wealth, these people, these men are rich out here, like a lot of them are, are wealthy, but a lot of them are, you can be wealthy, but you can be open minded, you can be wealthy and you can know about social injustice issues, but a lot of those people are wealthy or whatever, but aren't. They're willfully ignorant and all of those other things. So you should be quite aware, especially as a woman of color from the world over, of the type of people that you're going to meet here. And that's important for your well-being, your emotional well-being, um, your psychological well-being. That's why Cambridge isn't also for everyone. 
that's what they don't tell you so when you're trying to come here to cambridge really do your research and do your research really deep uh, in terms of coming here is, is this a place that you want to be at yes you're learning um you're going to have a degree from cambridge you're going to meet some incredible people from around the world but is that something that you're facing to deal with you know Thank you for watching another episode of the Z Fashionista show. I hope you enjoy those 10 things that, uh, from my experience, basically about Cambridge that you should know, things that they don't tell you. Um, yeah, I mean, I want to see as many of my, you know, melanated uh, man, you know, let's turn Cambridge into Wakanda for fun. Um, <laughs> I want to see more people, definitely people of color at Cambridge, uh, more people, do, people of color doing um, their postgraduate degrees, uh, more people of color at Cambridge, at Oxford, at Yale, at Princeton, at Harvard, at everywhere, uh, because um, we have the skills, we have the knowledge, we have the intelligence, we have all of that. Uh, yeah, just, you know, owning these spaces, being the best, doing the best, excellenting, opulenting and decadenting as usual. Thank you for watching another episode of the Z Fashion News Show and I'll see you next time. Probably we're going to talk about what we're going to talk about next time. Fashion. You know, something more lighthearted, something a bit more, you know, trendy, interesting.